Okay, so I have uh, 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 Judge Simpson had been a big uh, participator in World War II, as I remember, somewhere in South America. Uh, keeping the peace <laughs> from spreading, I guess, uh, from from Germany and uh, Italy and Japan. <clears throat> but anyway, he was some kind of ambassador or something and served for so many years and came back to Loudoun County and uh, as a war hero was elected county, county judge. I, I, not even sure of this, whether it was a contested election. I think I think Judge Dannel had had uh, his thirty years and had retired, okay. and he had already moved his office after the war. Continued his office in Lenore City. Judges in Tennessee have eight-year terms. Okay. Uh, elected officials, governmental type officials, generally have four, mm -hmm. four times, four years. Initially, the sheriffs, mm -hmm. to keep them honest, were two-year terms, so you could get at them again if they weren't doing it right. Right. So they were limited to six years. Mm -hmm. uh, Judge Ingram was elected, uh, I think he had a two-year term, and then they had election in uh, 60, and he got his first full term. And he created the General Sessions work in the county. And uh, Judge Simpson was elected again. He's well known in the county, and he was a Republican. Uh, but at any rate, this gets over into my election. Do you want to do Yeah, that? so in 64 you ran? 66. 66. Well, so actually you start running in 65 <laughs> probably. So what, what, what was your motivation to run in 66 then? <clears throat> well, okay, going back to my personal uh, involvement and in my family, uh, Sylvia and I uh, raised four children. Uh, we went to Trinity United Methodist, which was actually a church I think was created by the Lenores, but was well uh, well attended uh, by had a good congregation. Uh, but they were at that time, you know, kind of getting older, and they were happy to see us us young family. And I think we did ha help to get some more, some more young camp families in the church. And we so we were active there. And uh, we also, my wife uh, was a librarian and she was able to uh, get a job somewhere there. I can't remember what, exactly what year she started part time. Then she became the librarian for the elementary school for I think 30 years mm -hmm. and uh, for, for she retired some years ago. <laughs> I'm still working. Uh, and uh, I was and we were I was all particularly I was doing it she was doing the children which I have to thank her mm -hmm. and the children a lot for mm -hmm. how much they put up with me. Uh, but I was in, in the Lenore City Chamber of Commerce and uh, in the Loudoun County Bar Association, it had become dormant, was not doing anything. Tom Ingram and I got together and said, let's, let's get the Bar Association active again. And so for 20 or 30 years, it was fairly active, pretty active to begin with. We know we got them. We had other young lawyers that came in, Land Winfrey and Don Murray. Uh, Don became a criminal judge and also later a circuit judge, or he, maybe he's a circuit judge first. He got appointed twice. Don't think he ever did. Well, he may have run once after he got appointed. 
um, but they had a law firm together too. Uh, and, and Arnold Winfrey and McMurray. So we had Arnold in Loudoun and, uh, and Don and uh, Bland and Don in Lenore City had a law firm together. Uh, I was in the firm of, uh, c continued in the firm of Fowler and Gibson, Fowler and Danlin Fowler. Mm -hmm. And uh, after I'd been there a year, it was Daniel Fowler, Fowler and Sproul, and Daniel Fowler and Gibson. John Gibson was a graduate of law school from uh, from uh, Upper from uh, Upper East Tennessee, uh, who, who went to law school, and then uh, was also enticed into practicing law in Latin. Uh, and then, then for me, it was Daniel and Sproul and Fowler and Gibson. They just decided to split that it would be more convenient that way. Mm -hmm. Judge Daniel, uh, at the time I came here, was 72 years old. He had been out of county judge for eight years. I mean, for 16 years when I came. He had been, anyway, <clears throat> he, he uh, they had no children and he is, his wife lived in that uh, uh, hill on, as you go across the bridge, going west up on the hill. Well, one of the hills there that you can see on the right, there was the, uh, Fal it was, it was the <laughs> Dannel Farm. Okay which was named after his wife. And he didn't really own it. He ultimately moved to Lenore City and lived next door to me <laughs> in a house that I bought on the 15 acres of a Lenore farm and a farmhouse. And Judge Daniel moved in the house right next door with the Callaways, who actually then grew up there in, in Lenore City, but then became Callaway Oil Company in Blunt County. <laughs> uh, uh, so anyway, I was very active, and uh, in various organizations, and in practicing law generally. And uh, Sylvia was in a club, uh, in one of the girl women's clubs. And uh, I remember going to a party one time, and somebody said. You know, we need to get you. We need to have some young blood around here. We need you, you to run for county judge. <laughs> and then some others started saying that. And I was in the JCs. The, the Tennessee JCs at that time was a big deal all over the country. Mm -hmm. JCs, young chamber of commerce people. So I was in the young chamber, which is much more active than the senior than the senior chamber. Mm -hmm. I was in growth up. And so da, 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 I decided, well, what better way to advertise? But right before that, I had already left Judge Dental because we just weren't cheating and hawing. Mm -hmm. uh, he got up at six or five in the morning. He got up at five o'clock in the morning. I had those children. Mm -hmm. I had to take some of the children to, to uh, school. Uh, my wife, when she's a teacher, she could uh, take some of them to school in later years. We did have Mrs. Uh, Mamie, uh, you know, the lady that was our, who really kept our children over many years, and helped both of us to be professionally involved. Mamie Webb, uh, from the Webbs down in off of uh, in the in the. West end of Lenore City, outside the city limits, in the Huntsville community, which were the blacks were living there, and of course there's quite a few uh, of, the, of the whites too. Uh, but she, her family came from down, had all settled down in there, and and next to the Browder Hill 300 acre farm that went over the railroad and over to Highway 11, after Highway 11 came 
through the North City, which was in the 30s. Uh, but the, the tunnel there we go on that. And uh, I ran, I decided to run. Uh, I was really, the Democrats, I'm a Democrat. Uh, so that was one of the things about it. When I said, well, I could, can't lose anything really, except some time and whatever I can borrow to finance a campaign. Uh, but uh, I, advertisement, whatever, better advertisement can you have but to run. Mm -hmm. And back then, lawyers are not supposed to advertise. But that was one way you could advertise, by running and saying, vote for Harvey Sproul. Yeah. Hey, speaking about that, you saw me carrying that. I, out of all those posters that I put up all over the county, and Tom Ingram told me, he said, now when I ran for office, he's a Republican, but he had um, Mose Waller, Jr. Now Mose Waller was well known in Lenore City and well in, endowed with money. And his son comes along and very popular type fella all around him. <laughs> and he, and he uh, wanted to be, uh, didn't really have a occupation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think basically maybe got into the insurance business with, uh, with uh, his friend Lee. Who was well known too? Okay, then all right now, that'll come to me. Uh, <laughs> so here we go on. Uh, oh, about me running. Yeah, what was your motivation? <clears throat> so the motivation was that I had gotten involved in all these other activities. Was well. Now that gets over into the formation of the Committee 100. Just, just let, me, right let, me fin let me finish okay. whatever that was about me beginning to run. Okay, yeah. okay so, I, so I, and I was going to show you my posters. The, the, uh, I put up all those posters all over the county and, I, and Tom Ingram had said, I, I, tried, I tried to go to every house. Well, back then he, we were just a county of 20,000. And of course, you had to. The bridge wasn't built. You had to mm -hmm. go across on the ferry, yeah. uh, in Loudon and Lenore City. Well, the ferry was already done, and we had a bridge in Loudon at that time. That's another story. You probably got that from somebody else about how he had to pay, pay to get across. Yeah. Uh, so he went to effort. So I decided I would do that too. But when you do that, you decide you, you go to an occasional farmhouse, but you don't have time mm -hmm. to really go up and down driveways and uh, so forth. And sometimes you only have three houses together when you might be in a community that you could hit 30 houses. Mm -hmm. But uh, but you still, I still tried. I think maybe Tom almost almost got it. And, and but but I was present in each community and saying and I had my little cards passing them out <laughs> and I remember one place in Loudon I put up a, one of my cards and you knock on a lot of doors because people are not there or they won't come to the door or they're going to work and and I had I always put up a card saying I was glad to be there and this lady met me somewhere and she uh, and she said or maybe she called me on the phone and s said I, I would appreciate it if you would leave my bushes alone <laughs> I just said I was I, I'm sorry I missed you but she read misread my, my what my she thought I had hurt her her vines <laughs> uh, I said well I didn't uh, touch your vines <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, I put these, I did my own campaign. I did my own campaign and a lady from Greenback, 30 years later, I didn't keep any of it. it is, they're spread all over the place. Yeah, put them up soon. Uh, th th this, this one is the main one. Yeah. 
This was my color. I selected orange and blue, and orange it was, it had to be strong because the, the University of Tennessee right. type thing. Uh, plus, I read up on it, and uh, they advertisers over, the, over uh, TV and everywhere else said that orange was the thing that brought the most attention. Right. And, uh, of course, right here is not anything much about any uh, programs that I might be interested in, but I was known pretty well in a lot of, or, uh, of active organizations, mm -hmm. but the general populace probably didn't know me. But I uh, looked for a slogan, and uh, I picked Good for Loudoun County, mm -hmm. and what does that remind you of, Good for Loudoun County, what, as a slogan? Good for Loudoun County. Campbell soup. Oh, okay. Good. Oh, mm, good. Good. Good for you. Good. Yeah. For, yeah. Good for you. So, oh, well, that's just about as good as you could get. So, you know, <laughs> that's. I'm saying that I'm going to be do something. I'm going to be active because my opponent was not active. Okay. And uh, here was another one, but I, I didn't follow it. This is the one, and back then we used telephone poles a lot. Mm -hmm. You put it up on the telephone pole. Uh, you can't do that now, they, you know. The yeah. <laughs> well, for one thing, they're mostly metal. <laughs> um, and uh, did ads in the paper, such as I had one with my little daughter at that little at that time, she was uh, uh, four or five years old. It was a picture of her and we, me with me saying, uh, good for Loudoun County and I, let's, let's get active, let's get new jobs, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. But uh, the ads in the paper, I could do little different things. And this one, I had her have a black eye. She said, uh, she said I, was, I was for my daddy, <laughs> and I still am, even though I got a black eye. <laughs> That's good. That's good. And uh, did things like that. So I, I, I worked. I had to make money because I had left Judge Dantel and opened up my office over the Wilburn's Hardware. They had they had space up there, mm -hmm. and one of my law school mates from Upper East Tennessee went to the Air Force and came back out so he could practice law. Mm -hmm. And he came to Lenore City, another one. So we had three or four of us from UT that were working here, and. Uh, he just hadn't really caught on, and in and, and, and the Air Force, he was an officer, and he got big bucks there compared to what he was getting here. Okay. So he just, he decided to leave here, right at the time that I was deciding to that I might go out on my own, mm -hmm. because Judge Daniel, hours did not suit mine, mm -hmm. and he didn't quite. He thought maybe I ought to be doing more law practice than being involved in some of these organizations that I was helping out. Right. So I said the best thing to do is just get out on my own and and that's when I went to the party and they, they started saying, why don't you run for county judge? Yeah. Uh, and that's what I did even though I'm a Democrat. Mm -hmm. So what happened? was that I was the first Democrat to be elected in Loudoun County to a countywide office in 40 years. I was the first one in 40 years. If just you got Republican, if you got elected the first time, mm -hmm. you're in for life mm -hmm. unless you do something bad. Mm -hmm. 
you know, but, but I'm sure there was some, a lot of Republicans. Uh, in 40 years, it changed. So how long did you serve as county judge? The eight years. Eight years. I served eight. the eight years, but my, my salary was $6,000 a year. In the Army, I was making $6,000 a year, and I had my quarters and the other things, mm -hmm. side items that you get. So I had to really uh, skimp to, to do this. Mm -hmm. By the time in eight years that I had that I served, the salary had raised to 16000 okay. Well, of course, 16000 was worth a lot more than it is now, but it's still with four kids. Uh, I just, and you don't know yet all the things that I was doing in addition to my law practice, which I kept going all the time I was in the office because, you know, I knew I might not make it uh, I might, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. either dead elected or if I ran again, not be elected. 